Zoom or come on straight Hello. Up, straight yeah, it's up. there. Hi. Come on a bit earlier tonight because I've got my coaching call in my private members group at eight o'clock. So, and then after that, I am checking out. I'm just going to pop the link in as ever here for the membership club because at the moment I'm doing first two weeks free and I've got a more reduced option for anyone that needs it at the moment cost wise. So I'm just putting it in before I share something with you. Say hello so I can see who's there. Hang on. Can't spell. So. Okay, I've pinned it now. So anyone, because I always get asked after these calls about my private members club. So I've just popped the link. It's pinned to the top. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot, and one of the things that I shared with people who um, are struggling with anxiety or struggling with any form of stress or overwhelm, and one of the biggest things that changed for me was being able to become comfortable with the discomfort that some of that brings. Hi, Ivy. Hi, Katie. So there's a quote from Sydney Banks, who was the originator of the three principles that I talk about all the time, which is um, if the only thing we could do is become comfortable with the discomfort, then that in itself would change the world. Not in exactly those words, but something along those lines. And it's so true because that is one of the biggest things for me. The more comfortable I became with the discomfort, the less... I feared the next time it would come along and then the less we fear it, the less it shows up. Sorry, I'm just, in case you're noticing, there's someone, I'm just using my husband, does it? Something to, he normally runs a million miles when I'm on live, but I think this um, lockdown has changed him. He's becoming more placid, aren't you? Yeah. So I don't think many people will have seen the husband. They've seen the daughter, but not the husband. We've just snuck off um, out the way from the chaos. Um, and yeah, so, so the, the next question that usually comes from when I say to people, how, I'm not sure what you mean, Davina, do you mean, let me know what you mean. I'm not really sure what you mean. Um, so then people will say to me when I say, oh, it's about becoming comfortable with the discomfort. What people will then usually ask is, but how do you do that? Because it's really awful. It's really horrible, et cetera, et cetera. And do you need to sigh like that in the background? Sorry. Seriously. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> Cheeky cat. Um, and the thing with this is it's difficult sometimes to explain. I'll do my best, but effectively, will you keep still? Honestly, I can't cope. Um... I'm actually tempted to hang up and start going because you're actually irritating me. Do, do you want me to go? No, it's too late. You've already disrupted me. So, let me get back to my trailer thought. Right, the thing is, when we have thoughts... Now someone else has come in the room. Who's this? I'm on a live. Come on if you want. This is why I usually do it later because I get left alone. Here she is. The daughter. So... Okay, so when we are, Matt, seriously, when, when we are stressed and we're overthinking, it creates feelings, okay? So the more we're thinking and the more we're worrying, it creates feelings and that's where the discomfort comes. Usually when people are talking about the discomfort and the thing they want to get away from, usually they're referring to the physical symptoms, feeling sick, feeling dizzy or whatever it is for you. That's usually what people are wanting to avoid with the feeling. Like feelings alone, we can deal with. It's usually the physical symptoms of it um, that people become uncomfortable with. Now, those physical symptoms never last forever. They will always pass and they will always come and go. That's what they do. They're an energy that will flow through you. They're important to listen to, but they're not going to stay around. And so how do you become comfortable with it is really about just allowing it to do its thing. Where it becomes difficult for people is when they're interfering with what actually is nature's way. They will come and they will go. But often people believe there's something they need to do when there isn't. And so they'll interfere with it and they'll be like, why am I feeling like this? How do I get rid of it? How do I stop it? 
maybe I need to lie down, maybe I need to do this. And rather than just allowing the feelings to come and go and flow through you, as uncomfortable as it is, they're not going to last forever. Even adrenaline boost in your body doesn't last forever. It comes, yeah, it has some physical side effects and symptoms, but it's not going to last. And it's about sitting with that and actually the opposite of what you believe and most people understand or, or believe they understand is that there's something you need to do and there's absolutely nothing that you need to do. And therefore, it's almost the opposite of what people think. So people say to me, what do I do when it's like that? How do I stop it? And the thing is, there isn't anything for you to do. And that's why I do what I do, which is share with people about how this all works, because the more you understand it, the more comfortable you will become with allowing it just to do its thing and go, what are you two laughing at? Don't up. Well, don't take me seriously, do you? Yeah. So that's the thing. Oh, will you just shush a minute? So... The key is that there isn't anything to do. And the more you can see that, the more you can understand that. And that's what I'm pointing to day in, day out in my members club. And any courses or books or anything I do is always about, actually, there isn't anything for us to do. And the more we see that and the more okay we become with that and the more we just accept what is, the easier it becomes to come out of the other side of it. So more often than not, people think there's something they need to do to stop it to get rid of it and the more you do that again that is you'll hear me talk a lot about resistance the more you do that the more resistance there is and the longer it's going to stick around will you two just literally stop it i'm sorry if you can hear them in the background so i'm going to keep this short and sweet because of these two in the background um how do you cope with depression depression is the same way as anxiety anything else it you know if you are feeling depressed you are having probably lots of low depressed thoughts and stuff like that so it's then accumulating over time um so it's the same thing understanding more about how human nature works allowing yourself just to accept what is in the moment not beating yourself up not layering on thoughts etc etc what i always talk about um health anxiety health anxiety irene is the same as any other form of anxiety ultimately when we're anxious we're fearing danger aren't we? we're fearing for our lives so everybody that feels anxiety is um is really worried about their health because ultimately they're wanting to stay alive and they're wanting to survive so you're not alone in that anyone who's anxious is ultimately worried about survival that's how it works so again it's just Keep watching my videos. Have a look. There's some more on YouTube. Um, you know, there's loads of resources out there. Um, and I've popped the link to my members club on there, which is pinned to the top in the comments. Have a look. Um, I've tried to make it as cost effective for people as possible at the moment. I've done a lower um, version of it cost wise. My daughter's just fell on the floor because I've just nudged her out of the way. <laughs> And um, and I've also done it so that you don't have to pay for the first two weeks for people that need that support. So have a look. Hi, Sarah. Um, so as I say, I've come on earlier tonight with these two. I will not be making that mistake again. I will be coming on my own next time without my husband and my daughter. I just thought it'd be nice to sit here, chill as a family and still do my work. But clearly they can't cope with being quiet for like literally five minutes. So I will go later tomorrow um, as ever. All I ask with these videos, I'll keep doing them. I will keep sharing. Just ask that you share them with me so that more people can reach them and access them. Um, and it, yeah, I just really appreciate it. This here is my my world, everybody. Minus the animals. Minus the animals, yeah. <laughs> um, Jennifer... The private group is the Living Your Best Life Members Club. It's called Living Your Best Life because that's what we all want to do at the end of the day. Um, and it used to be $24.95 a month and you get access to all my courses. I've now done a lower membership which starts at $11.99 for those that don't want the courses but just want to access the coaching and the support. And as I say at the moment, anyone that signs up, the payment doesn't come out for the first 14 days. Um, just to give people a little bit of leeway at the moment because I know it's difficult. Hello from the US. Hello, that means Jennifer. It's the middle of the night. Maya has a pen pal in the US now, don't you? In LA. That means it's the middle of the night. Is it the middle of the night? No, no not, not quite. They're still working. Still working. Because Daddy works with people in the US, don't you, Dad? Uh -huh. So yeah, so I'll leave it there. I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for everyone that shares it, and I will catch up with you tomorrow without these two. Mm.
Unless you want us to here. No, thanks. No, not you, them, not you. No, they don't want you here because you're both very distracting. Okay, bye for now. <laughs> hey.